Hello, welcome back to Brand Sushi Live Noodling. In this episode, we're gonna do something that's a bit simple. It's just um, me trying to just improv. Um, I saw this um, artworks the uh, just recently, and it's called um, I, and I found this term called brutalism. Brutalism it's a kind of new term for me. I don't know exactly what it is. I'm not an architect, but um, I just Google it for a bit, and then. Um, it's got some interesting kind of structure um, so um, I don't know exactly what it is but the, in the description here the term originated from the French word for raw so used by Le Corbusier to describe choice of material using beton, brut, raw concrete, brutalism I don't know exactly what it is but I think it's kind of interesting um, term in my mind and uh, looks like uh, we have a lot of example here that's kind of interesting as well to recreate I think I should look at them more um, it reminds me of a, another program called structured scenes um, this is actually something that has been turned into a node inside Spreadshop, it's called um, generative, oh this is actually, I just marking around just now um, if you look at um, one node called um, generative art this is actually, um, if you use a text uh, with a code that's similar to it's a structured scenes, this, this guy is gonna generate um, kind of a generative art it's almost like a brutalism as well. It's a um, lots of overlapping um, matrices that generate kind of structure. Uh, I've seen some amazing artworks created using structured scenes. Well, you can do that with the code as well, um, and it tends to get pretty heavy uh, because it's uh, this guy is generating a lot of objects. Uh, but anyway, I'm thinking to maybe okay. I'll just gonna play around and kind of have this brutalism in my mind and kind of try something real quick. So I'm gonna try with something that's super raw. What is the easiest object to create in Blender? Um, no, it's not the monkey. It's actually the 3D cube. So this is brutalism cube. I'm just gonna make something pretty random. Okay, cube is very easy to create, and then in Spreadshop it's even easier. Just use the box node. Um, nothing else, nothing more or less. And this guy, you plug the vertices data and the polygon data, and you get the cube. And this is the viewer. And of course, if you if you want to do more, you can. Um, um, change the scaling but you see in the notes itself it doesn't have any like control for the scaling of XYZ but you can do that using the matrix so no problem if you actually provide the matrix information this guy is, um, can do more for you obviously you know that the location a single location is nah, will give you that if you have uh, if you want like the multiple location you can use random or the next easiest one to use is list input just use vector and you can have one or two you can do that manually one by one you don't want to do that you probably just want to use a random vector you know just randomize and if this guy is not enough for you because it's like spherical you can further randomize using randomized input vertices. This is all the basic stuff. I already try uh, do this so many times. Um, but if you want to do, let's say we have just a uh, one location, just at zero zero zero. If you use the random random vector and plug it into the scale, you will see that we're gonna get random boxes all in different scale and you can still scale it um, using this main scale attribute but here you, you can have like super random cube and a lot of them and if you increase this 
very easily you can end up with a some kind of brutalism some kind of art especially uh, if I turn on like uh, turn on the ambient occlusion uh, that's starting to look a little bit more interesting turn on the shading some of them seems to be flipped because the random vector give you negative value sometimes you don't want that you want to just output a positive value so vector out vector in and here we're gonna use a math absolute absoluto absolute okay we're gonna do that for xyz okay now that's a little bit better there is no flipping geometry okay that's kind of nice but we just end up with this kind of spherical looking not so interesting you can use again another random vector and just plug that in you know have some kind of structure randomize input vertices randomize that further and you start to have some kind of structure even though they are they're pretty boring they're just like cube that's still um, pretty uh, interesting structure once you have all these numbers to play with um, perhaps you don't want it to be too random so you can have maybe cylinder just use the points of the cylinder and then now you have something that's a little bit more or less a little bit like a, like a building because it's uh, based on the cylinder and for the random um, boxes here we need to make sure the number is equal the total number of the vertices so we need to use list length plug in data there and then use the stethoscope to check the data sometimes we don't get the right number the the right list length we need to change it in the level it seems to be right so we just plug that into the count okay now no matter how many vertices we have from the cylinder we will always get um, that amount of randomness for each of the cube each of the cube now is becoming like unique um, yeah, you can have as much as you want or less if you want. Um, you can have quite a lot here. Actually, we have how many now? 480. You can have 100,000, no problem. Um, as long as you don't bake it. Don't bake it too easily because you, you might end up with 10,000, 100,000 objects. That's not, not funny. Blenders might slow down. What you really want is uh, if you want to bake it, use viewer be mesh and then merge merge into a single object that's gonna give you a better uh, manageable object you see I, I bake it and it's become this object um, and that's actually one design um, you can make a couple of these and you end up with a lot uh, like quite complex objects being generated on the fly um, there is another way if you use like instancing that's also work but I like I like doing it this way and then um, I think you just bake it just bake it every frame if you like um, I wish uh, Spreadshock has a better way to do the baking like uh, another way to bake and then bake every frame and then rename it on every frame that's can be one of one solution uh, maybe we can use animation nodes to help that part but anyway uh, this guy is live so whenever I change the frame if I change the seed number we're gonna get a different design like so okay that's uh, that's one thing I, I can make a duplicate of this and then uh, if I plug a frame into this guy so now we have a new design change the frame another new design and so on and so on 
So this is fun, you know. It's like um, you don't even need to do much, and you have this uh, so many random uh, procedural brutalism kind of artwork. Change the size, maybe randomize the size for each uh, generations, and that's gonna be more interesting, of course. Yeah, I think, yeah, that's pretty much it, what I want to talk about. Um, you can do more here, like, if you want to do something a bit crazier. This is a mesh, and for mesh to become an outline, you can use wireframe, obviously. Wireframe with thickness, that's one way to do it. Another way is to, if we don't use wireframe, we just convert this guy into a curve. I like to do that. I actually convert convert uh, mesh into curve. Is this guy curve now? No, it's not curve. Okay, it doesn't like it. You need to do it from here actually. Um, instead of faces, I just plug in the edges, and the output should be just the edge if I'm not wrong. See, that's just the edges, and with the edges you can convert to mesh to curve and now this guy should be a curve no still still refusing convert object to curve okay now this guy is a curve we can extrude it and death offset if you want to offset it I know, I thought that's quite beautiful in itself. It's quite abstract. It's very random, but still quite interesting structure. Once you do this, you can convert it back to mesh. Convert to mesh, and then you can do something crazy like displacement, cloud. See, using structure since you can do this kind of thing, um, obviously. But that's um, structure scenes have its own language that's um, more or less like a. It's it, it's interesting in itself. It will take you sometimes to understand structure scenes until you're comfortable with it. It's a little bit like L3 system. Uh, Google Chrome is always so slow. Okay, structure scene. I think Sydney has some of the brutalism architecture as well. I think uh, at least I could think of is uh, there's one in UTS that's super simple building and then there's one near the Harbor Bridge. Yeah, exactly. That's that's brutalism. It's just made of uh, beton. It's made of uh, this uh, concrete. I'll show you. This is the one that you can see from Sydney Harbor Bridge. It's very boring looking building. Okay, this is the old Greater Union Cinema. This is a famous one. Uh, where else? This is brutalism. That's uh, this one is more modern, of course, with the rounded edges. But that's kind of interesting. A lot of building like this in uh, in Russia, I think. Um, it has some structure. It it doesn't overlap. Structure scenes, um, artwork is more abstract. Um, Sometimes also you have like uh, variations of uh, wireframe and um, actual volume. That's actually nice uh, to try. Um, yeah, this one. Again, so when I look at this, something like this, it looks like um, the walled city, the Kowloon walled city. 
it's very very interesting um, yeah so yeah this uh, with this kind of thing you can you can try experiment what you can come up with it I think the variations of the wireframe and actually just boxes will give a little bit more interesting result if you want maybe you can use remesh for it I don't know I, I haven't tried remesh and blockiness that's also can be interesting you see this is already being remeshed and it's, it's become something else um, it's a bit heavy maybe but wow that's interesting um, maybe at the bevel uh, that can be a little bit heavy but remesh is, a, is pretty fast to handle this kind of thing it's pretty impressive don't use bevel just like this quite nice I like this this kind of a uh, weird looking structure this one is very boring but um, let's say you use uh, decimate and just reduce the number there's also another idea maybe this guy also can be uh, decimate decimated Uh, if, if it's too abstract it doesn't look beautiful anymore as a human we like uh, we like some randomness but not too much otherwise it doesn't look uh, pleasing to the eyes so I don't know what else we can do with this um, wireframe of course is nice and it, we can keep the original so we have the frame and then the original surface triangle it this guy is not too bad if we give it a different material color I don't, I don't know yeah yeah so just experiment with this is a uh, it's one way you can approach this uh, brutalism um, I think it's probably like the opposite of uh, minimalistic although this is really based on a lot of minimalist kind of uh, geometry so yeah try give it a try this is just a simple setup um, you probably already know it very very simple you can use try using noise and use uh, the fractal node and use the position uh, value of the fractal noise and then see what you can come out with um, hopefully you like this uh, live noting if you have any comment suggestion just let me let me know down below and see you in the next video thank you